Welcome to the MSME Radio Network. The broadcast shows are for informational and entertainment purposes only. They are not designed to provide listeners with specific personal, medical, or counseling advice. Individuals with a medical issue should always consult their health care provider. MSME is not responsible for content of individual shows. The views expressed by show hosts or their guests are their own. Enjoy the show. Hi everyone, it's Tori, MS girl, you know the one. I hope all my fellow MSers and caretakers and uh, friends and fans and everybody that likes to listen to the podcasts are doing well. I hope you had a great summer. Can you believe it's fall already? That was a the quickest summer ever. It was a blink of an eye. So hopefully everybody's doing well and I hope things are um, going great for everyone and everyone's getting back into the fall gear, pumpkins and Halloween and school and all of that stuff. So hopefully everything's going really well for everyone. Um, This month I'm going to talk about how to make lemonade out of lemons. I know it's a cliche topic that's what I came up with to think about because what happened this summer to me and you guys know a lot of the background if you've been um, listening consistently but it's been a really rough year since 2017 and 2018 have been rough and things kind of went smooth at some points and at other points they didn't And so in 2018, I thought, oh, this is going to be my year and everything's going to change and I'm going to be on this wonderful, great healing journey and things are going to go really smoothly and well. And it kind of turned out that at the beginning of the year, it it did. And then I did have a visit from somebody that um, tours around the United States and she comes into people's home and she helps everybody. Um, You don't have to have a mess, you just she does, she focuses on MS and she herself has MS, but, um, she helps people change their mindsets and their movement and their, um, food. And so I had a visit with her for three days, which was really a blessing. And I kind of thought, oh, she was going to leave and then everything was going to be great. And I was going to be on my way to this wonderful, spectacular healing journey. And in the meantime, we also, which I talked about in the past, had to have our house modified. And so we had to enlarge and widen the bathroom door so I can get my walker and my wheelchair in there. And we had to get a stair lift so I could get upstairs to the bedroom and to the shower. And then, unexpectedly, two weeks ago, I had to have surgery. So that's been kind of a bummer. So that's another setback. So here I'm relearning how to walk and... Some days I can take uh, zero steps, like today with my walker. I did three sit-to-stands, but I couldn't even take a step. Yesterday I took 11 steps, but then like three days before that, I took like 44 steps. So it's unpredictable, which goes along with the MS. And I guess it's just part of my healing journey. So I kind of went through a little bit of a depression and thinking, I w- oh, I was going to have a better journey for 2018, and by then things are going to, my quality of life and things with my MS are going to be a little bit better, and it really didn't go that way. And so what I came down to is that I have to change my mindset because it is a symptom of MS for to get, to get depressed, but I do suffer from depression with my MS, probably because all of the things that I used to be able to do in the past and I could never do before, or I used to do all the time, I cannot do anymore, and I'm stuck at home a lot. And even though I have a very quality life and a good supportive support system, and, you know, I get to still work very part-time for the Rocky Mountain MS Center and, um, you know, do a blog and do this radio show, my life is quality and I have great friends and everything, but it's still, I get depressed about things. And so I was thinking, oh, everything's going to be perfectly great, but it really isn't. And so I decided I'm going to change my mindset. So I made a goal for myself. I'm giving myself a whole year. It, well, it'll be 
September of 2019. And hopefully, I'm not going to say my goal out loud yet. Maybe I will in later podcasts. But at this point, I have set a goal that I want to accomplish by September of 2019. And I'm going to work up to that goal until then. In the meantime, I'm changing my mindset, my movement, and my food. So with my mindset... I'm doing a lot of journaling, and a lot of the things I'm writing are just things that I want. Like, and I and I'm I'm doing it in the present. I'm not gonna. I'm not saying like I will walk one day. I am saying I am walking. So even though I walk with a walker, I I would write I am walking. I am happy. I am standing up on my own without help. And then at night, before I go to bed, I'm doing a grateful journal. Sometimes I write it down and sometimes I just say it out loud. And it doesn't have to be, oh, I'm grateful for my family and my husband and my house. And it can be something just as simple as I'm grateful for this great cup of coffee or I'm grateful for this wonderful TV show that I watched or I'm grateful that somebody made me laugh today. And that just gets everything set in your mind that you have that mindset. So I'm doing that every day. I'm doing a morning meditation every day, which I'm just getting an app off of my phone. And then there's a whole bunch of apps. And I I can't remember what the name of the app is, but just go and Google uh, meditation apps and it'll lead you through them. And I'm doing the morning meditation one. So I do it Every morning, it's the exact same one. It's um, music and noises and breathing and um, a gentleman is talking and telling you to breathe in and out. And And he always says in it, if you do it for 10 days consecutively, it becomes a pattern. So I have done it for 10 days sec- successfully. So hopefully that does become a pattern. I'm also doing the tapping. I don't know if you guys know what that is. You can Google it, but you tap kind of like with your hand certain parts of the body like the top of your head or your forehead and it it goes in order and you say positive affirmations about yourself so I would tap and say like although I am not where I want to be physically I still love and accept myself and then you would go to you know that you did that in your head and then you would tap on your forehead all, and you would say the same thing all the way through. Although I am not where I want to be physically, I still love and accept myself. So I'm doing that. With my movement, I'm working on uh, the MS videos that I work on. And I also bought a recumbent stationary bike. Because I remember that a couple of years ago when I was in, um, it was, it was a, it's called Spalding Rehab. And it's a rehab for people that are like paralyzed or have MS or like really recovering from serious, serious things like strokes and car accidents and stuff. And they work you out three hours a day instead of the one hour a day. But she would put me on the recumbent bike every time. And I remember starting when I first went there, I could do three minutes. And when I left, I could do an hour. And so I think that having that here will help me build my endurance and my cardio. So I'm working on that along with the um, videos. And then I also found some like um, dance videos, which I can't stand up and dance because I'm not walking, but you can do them in your chair. And then I also found some chair yoga that you can do. So kind of mix it up so you don't get bored and do the same thing every day. But um, I think that'll help. But because I had to have unexpected surgery a couple weeks ago that kind of set me back, um, I'm not really where I want to be. And so I'm just trying to right now, I'm doing as, as much movement as I can, but I'm only two weeks out of surgery and there's some healing going on and I haven't been back for my post-op appointment is still not for a week and a half. And so I have to still be pretty careful with the surgery and the incision and everything. So I'm really focusing on the mindset and I'm also focusing on the food. So with the food, I'm starting to eat 
paleo. I know a lot of people have a lot of different opinions on that. Um, and there's a lot of different protocols and different diets and different things. For me, I was already dairy and sugar free. And so I added in the gluten free. And to be honest with you, I've only done it five days. I've only five days in. Some days I'm strong. You know, I can walk a step. Some days I can walk 44 steps. Some days I can get up out of my chair by myself. Some days I can't. Some days I need help. So it's just kind of minute by minute. I'm not quite sure what's going on. But I do know that right now I am working on the healing of my surgery. And of course that stepped, put a step back in my healing process. I wanted my healing journey to be this great, positive, wonderful thing. And by the end of 2018, ta-da! But obviously that's not the way it's going. And so I just have to finally accept that. And I'm accepting it. I'm going forth on my mindset. I'm going forth on my movement. I'm going forth on my food. I've had um, reached out and had um, people come in and help me with that or reached out and phoned or emailed or contacted people to do that. So um, hopefully I'm in the right direction. I'm taking a step in the right direction and I've made a goal and that's a good thing too I think I made a goal for two that September of 2019 so I'm not going to tell you the goal yet maybe in future shows but at this time I've made a goal for myself I write I write it down every day hopefully I get to that goal so moving on to the mindset part I wanted to read um an affirmation to you. And I'm sure most of you have probably heard of Louise Hay. She wrote a book called You Can Heal Your Life. And she believes in healing your life with mindset. And um, she also worked with Dr. Wayne Dreyer. Unfortunately, they've both passed away. But they both believe in empowering your body and your health and everything by mindset. And that if your mind is positive and if you feel positive, you can get better. And when I say get better, I'm not talking about a cure. I'm talking about you can have a quality life. You can maybe take a step with your walker if that's your goal. You can maybe um, do the dishes if that's your goal or make your dinner or whatever it is. So I want to read you this um, affirmation that she wrote in there. And again, her name is Louise Hay and the book is called You Can Heal Your Life. And it's really about your mindset. And when you focus on that, things in your life are supposed to get better. So here it goes. All right. Deep at the center of my being, there is an infinite well of love. I now allow this love to flow to the surface. It fills my heart, my body, my mind, my consciousness my very being, and it radiates out from me in all directions and returns to me multiplied. The more love I use and give, the more I have to give. The supply is endless. The use of love makes me feel good. It is an expression of my inner joy. I love myself, therefore I lovingly care for my body. I lovingly feed it nourishing foods and beverages. I lovingly groom it and dress it. And my my body lovingly responds to me with vibrant health and energy. I love myself, therefore, I provide for myself a comfortable home, one that fills my needs and is a pleasure to be in. I fill the rooms with the vibration of love so that all who enter, myself included, will feel this love and be nourished by it. I love myself, therefore, I do things that I truly enjoy doing. One that uses my creative talents and abilities, working with and for people that I love and that love me. I love myself, therefore, I behave and think in a loving way to all people. For I know that for which I give out returns to me multiplied. I only attract loving people in my world, for they are a mirror of what I am. 
I love myself, therefore I forgive and totally release the past and all past experiences, and I am free. I love myself, therefore I love totally in the now, experiencing each moment as good and knowing that my future is bright and joyous and secure. For I am a beloved child of the universe, and the universe lovingly takes care of me now and for me- and forever more. And so it is. And so I love reading that quote because I, I think it just shows exactly what's going on. If we love people and we're kind and to ourselves and to others, and we we fill our energy and our body and our home and our relationships with love, it's going to be returned to us multiplied. And I think that's a mindset thing. And I think when your mind has hope and your mind gives you hope to get better or take the step you want to take or meet with a person that you want to meet or be able to go to a dinner or a wedding or something that MS has held you back from. Sometimes you you can do it with your mind. I'm not saying you're going to be cured and we don't have MS anymore. We're always going to have MS. There's not a cure right now until they come up with one. We're going to have a lot of us are going to have to take medicine to keep our symptoms at bay. I know I certainly have to take a lot of medicine. I have to use disability aids. I have to use clothes that, you know, are comfortable and easy to put on because my fine motor skills are not good to do things. But if we, if we gravitate this, or if we give out this love, it will gravitate back towards us. And I think it will help with our healing journey, which is all a journey for us. I mean, obviously we can't reverse MS, but we can keep it at bay or we can sometimes maybe we can't but we can keep our mindset there and i think by having a good mindset and i think that's powerful it's powerful for the people that are around us because we want to be positive we want to be very positive especially to our caretakers and our family and friends that love and care for us especially because it's hard being a caretaker and they're tired and they're exhausted and you know, they have to do what they have to do in their day, whether it be a job or whatever, and then they have to come home and help with dinner or dishes or help, like in my case, help, help me get onto the stair lift so I can get into the wheelchair and get into bed. And so, you know, that's rough. And we, I want to give out positivity and love to myself and to everyone else. And in, unless you love yourself first... You have to be number one because you can't give out love to anybody unless you love yourself first. It's kind of like when you're a mom, you you know, if the mom isn't happy, nobody's happy. So if you aren't happy with with where you are in your healing journey, nothing's going to work. Like, and sure, we're always going to have ups and downs and things are going to go wrong. And like I had to have this surgery and you know, I broke my leg and I'm learning to walk and, you know, blah, blah, blah. Everybody knows what, what we have to go through with MS. We've all, we're all there personally, even though we all have different symptoms and we all experience things differently. Let's just try to work on our mindset and our brains, set goals, try and be positive and have hope. And then in in hope, we can we can always have hope. I mean, we can still be happy in our lives just because we walk with a disability aid or, or, or we're in a wheelchair or someone's judging us because we are disabled. Or I I know a couple months ago, somebody in my family, not my personal family, but my extended family called me crippled. And Oh, that put me in a major, major mindset. I I went crazy for like a month on that. And it's like, you know what? Now it wouldn't bother me because I would just tell him right back. I would be like, you know what? I love myself for who I am. I don't define myself by MS. I am a person living with MS and I love myself and I'm only going to 
have people in my life that gravitate towards me and towards the love that I give. And I only want people in my life that support me and support the love that I give. So it needs to stay positive, have hope, have joy, be grateful. The more grateful we are, the more aware of um, of things. You know, you're more aware of things when you're grateful. Even if it's so silly, it doesn't even have to be like this huge, you know, oh, I'm so grateful for my family and my friends and my house. You know, it could just be like, oh, I'm just grateful for this. But anyways, in Louise, Hay, in Louise Hay's book, she breaks down all of these um, diseases that people have and kind of why they have them. And I looked up multiple sclerosis. I don't know if it's accurate, um, but it does kind of make sense because a lot of people that I know with um, multiple sclerosis are type A personalities. They're very strong-willed. They're overachievers. And so you kind of look up what you're dealing with. So I look up multiple sclerosis and it says one of the root of the problems with, with it because she believes everything is mindset and in your mind is mental hardness, hard heartedness, iron will, inflexibility, and fear. Now I can't talk for any of you, but I know for me that hit everything on the, on the, on the head. And, um, it explained me to a T and who I was before I had MS. Now many of things have changed. I mean, I'm much more kind and compassionate and, I see things differently and I'm open and loving and caring towards each and every person that I meet, but I'll also stick up for myself and not be taken advantage of. And so what the affirmation is that she writes next to the multiple sclerosis is by choosing loving, joyous thoughts, I create a loving, joyous world. I am safe and I am free. And that's so true. All we have to do is choose loving, joyous thoughts. And it's okay to be pissed off, you know, sometimes because, trust me, I know I get that way with MS many a times. I mean, it totally messes with your system, especially with how crazy and unpredictable it is. But if overall, on a daily basis, we can wake up and try and be joyful and mindful and loving, then I think overall maybe... That will help us with our lives, with our healing journey, with with our loved ones. And we can really focus on, when I say trying to get healthy, I'm not saying reading MS, but trying to get healthy in our lives. Like health, health in, doesn't just include your physical health. Health is spiritual, physical, emotional, mental. And we want to have healthy relationships in every part of our life so that we can be balanced because we all know that stress triggers MS and stress is inevitable. It comes up in everybody's life, but the more loving and joyous we are and the more hope that we have that will keep our symptoms at bay. Um, depending on what kind of MS you have, you might not go into a relapse or your progression might take a little bit of a halt or whatever it is. So that's what I'm working on personally. I hope that that helps just one, even if I just help one person in the world by them listening to this, I would be grateful for that. Um, I hope you all have a really great September. I'll talk to you again in October. And I hope that you all are loving and joyous, and grateful, and have hope, and stay brave. All right? Love you guys. Talk to you next month.